Hello my friends and welcome back to episode 16 of the Second Aid Show where today as we have been, we've been quite on form recently so we have to go and um, do another one which is around the villains and potentially Sauron in this show but firstly before we go any further it is um, the day of recording it is bonfire night in the UK so I'm sorry if you do hear fireworks in the background. Um, I'll try my best to edit them out. You probably can hear them while I'm speaking right now. But today joining us, we have Chris from the Philosopher Games. Hello, my friend. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here on your show. An honor. Thank you, my friend. It is an honor to have you on too, definitely. And it's going to be quite fun, I think, today because um, they're going to be discussing, looks like, thing that we wanted to discuss about for a while which is Sauron but firstly actually secondly joining me again is Kyle hello my friend hey man great to be here with everyone indeed great to have you on and finally Lakitia hello ready to talk some bad guys let's go <laughs> that's the enthusiasm <laughs> So um, <laughs> I really wish the firework went off then. That would have been. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody's got to be a contrast to Hen and his high. Oh my god! So <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that massively. So at least someone is happy to be here. But anyways, <laughs> so what we also do have in this video is we have some satellite aerial footage of some of. The of one of the sets that we get us linked with the rumors of today's video so yeah we have um been able to find them not um get them that's the difference we haven't been given these we have found them on open source ways so um i think so yeah all illegal and everything so nothing to worry about that for once but i think how it's going to work today so we've got the first bit of news around um Sour and Izzy in season one, etc., stuff like that. Then we'll get on, uh, we'll show the satellite images, and of course, haven't hyped it up too much because I know it th th is quite interesting, but it's nothing too massive, or you know, that's like oh my god, something like that. Um, but it's still quite interesting, so we'll discuss that, and then we'll go on to the rest of the leaks. I think we have about three to four more as well, so I think let's just get right into it. So the first thing which gets asked a lot in comment sections and in general is is Sauron in season one and exclusive Sauron is in season one of Lord of the Rings on Prime and is additionally a credited character for the first season he is said to be on the Humphrey so Humphrey is the name of one of the places in New Zealand so he's said to be on the Humphrey human village sets which is apparently a, a in canon wise and in the story story wise it is a village in middle earth we don't know who well we do know it's human men settlers so yeah his actor was on these sets for many months so firstly um i know there's not a lot oh well, there's quite a lot to take away from this but chris sauron is in season one so that does make sense doesn't it it does totally make sense. I would be surprised if he would not be in season one because I guess um, from all the characters, he's definitely one of the most present in the second age. So, um, yeah, I'm not really surprised by this uh, news. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, indeed. But what we will get onto is, is he maybe, is it a secret that he is Sauron or whoever's playing him as Sauron or is it a secret that it is a Sauron in season one so that, I think that is more the discussion but what we can say is that we know we can um, say that Sauron is literally a credited character for season one so yeah I think that takes any of that anywhere any of the doubts away that oh Sauron is not going to be in season one and Carla and Lakitia I'll get to your thoughts on that in a second as well but I think let's just um let's just move straight on to the next one. So it is that adding on to it. So one thing we want to take away as well is that we think we know who Sauron. We, we personally know who Sauron, the character playing Sauron is, but we're not confirmed and it's not hundred percent sure. So we'd like to set forward, but this apparently this is it's one of a few characters, and we'll get onto that in a second. But exclusive. Sauron on these human village sets is said to be apparently a quote mysterious hooded robed yet menacing figure 
if this character is Sauron. So, and and from other sources, this character is said to be quote very intimid- intimidating as well. And um, the actor playing this hooded character, which is presumably Sauron, is currently unknown. But I think what we have to take away from this, first of all, Kyle, we have looks like been probably seeing Sauron in season one as a mysterious hooded robed yet menacing figure mm. at these men village sets yeah well I mean it, you know um it's it's confirmation that that Sauron exists in the first season whether yeah. whether he's revealed or not and I know there's been some some um uh some debate around whether he would appear in the in the first season period due to you know you know, I know there's been rumblings of there being pacing issues and things like that, but um, for me personally, I think there has to be some uh, sort of presence uh, from the jump. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, indeed. And um, just if I want to clarify, I said it's a menacing figure. So um, just to uh, make sure. So um, as, um, but anyway, so um, Lakitia is looking like, this if on this um description of mysterious and then big menacing do you think this might play into the fact that maybe the characters or the people on set don't know that this is character maybe Sauron maybe mm. not necessarily i mean i think the mysterious hooded figure that goes very well with the stereotypical you know mustache twirling villain so i yeah. i I don't necessarily think it's got anything to do with that. Uh, but I'm certainly really, really happy to hear that he's going to be appearing in season one. I, like others has, have said before me, I really didn't have any doubts about it either. And I think it's a really smart choice. I mean, I really hope they flesh him out and have the audience, you know, have a relationship with him. And I think that was something that folks have often criticized about the big bad in the Lord of the Rings because you didn't get to know him. And a similar thing happened in Game of Thrones as well. People just didn't care about the Night King at all. So I'm really, really happy that we're going to get, you know, at least some presents from Sauron. Mm -hmm. But I hope you didn't have to sympathize with him. I would not want it to be like that. (laughs) Um, I don't know. (laughs) But, um, Chris, I think law-wise, so we know that... Okay, we know that this is going to be a late second aid show, well, presumably, and... Lawways, where do you think this fits in? We know 3,100 of the Second Age, or around that time, um, Sauron has risen again in Middle-earth, but now he's in just around some, he's in some of the Numenorean colonies, He is attacking some of their villages, so we know this happens. you think this might be indicating that, possibly? Yes, um, totally um, possible that this is happening, I guess. Um, after um, he basically lost the war um, uh, against the, the elves, you could say, with the help of the Numenorians. He was not the biggest fan of the Numenorians and quite um, angry at them, you could say, and he still had, he still wanted, he wanted payback. And uh, that makes sense that he slowly starts to put things into motion to get his revenge there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I assume this would be something um, um, they would set up there. And also, even after the war, even though he lost this war, it was not like um, uh, Mordor was um, besieged or um, he had a lot of trouble. His infrastructure, etc., was still all intact and he could basically just rebuild his armies and also the elves had to recover, for example. I mean, that's a complicated uh, topic in the law, what Galadriel exactly does in this time and when she went to Lorien and established her there herself. But... Um, with uh, Kiliborn and whatever it is, she de- there's definitely some structuring also going on with the elf, with Eregion not being there anymore, and then, then Rivendell becoming a new um, spot there. And I think the elves were busy. Um, also, I, the Numenorians were busy with expanding, and um, Sauron was busy with regaining his strength, and nobody basically um, stopped him from that, I guess, in that time. So it makes totally sense that we might see a time where he starts to pressure, um, I don't know, some villages, um, maybe trying to find new allies, finding new resources, whatever. I can totally see that. And I know you you aren't the biggest fan of the rumor of Galadriel in Numenor, but do you think <laughs> now we are? Um, 
potentially starting to piece together what might be happening. So Saruan is attacking, looks like some villages, and now he is stationed at one of, maybe this could be a key village. And then, um, it looks like, maybe because of that, Galadriel and maybe this Arik character have to go to Numenor to ask for their for their help again and maybe the Numenorians are going to come back over and but Sauron is going to willingly go back to Numenor so maybe we are maybe starting to see that as what is the wide the bigger picture I think is the best phrase to put it so yeah I think we will get back onto that in a bit but the thing um again I'm sorry if there's fireworks in the background um the um <laughs> so we have also been able to obtain some really interesting bird's eye view overviews and aerial shots of this man village set from middle earth which is actually in fact of course in new zealand so yeah we've been able to get it of course as i said earlier we haven't been given it we've been able to find it using open source means so i think it will be on screen now so this is um Lakita, you want to take over what's the name of this where is it close to we don't want to give the exact location because <laughs> it is private property so. no uh okay so this is actually really close to kumeo where, where which is where their studio is located and there's also several other locations where they filmed that we know of like riverhead forest um, so it's in the West Auckland general area, close to all the beaches where they were filming as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, indeed. So yeah. So um, that is, as you can see on screen right now, of course, it is quite interesting. So what we think we can tell is that this is, um, it is basically at the end of construction. So all of the buildings that are there. Uh, that we can see on screen right now will be the ones that was used during filming there isn't any more buildings being built on there so that's what we can um get from that so this is what is basically what was used to film on these sets so i think what of course is is quite far back and i'm i'm probably zooming in a bit on screen right now but um kyle what are your first thoughts on this it does it looks like it is a encircling village around it looks like a be a bit of trees in the middle do you think is that what it looks like yeah it almost looks like there could be disjointed set pieces here and there so they would film in different areas um you know the details not 100 percent clear but but there's definitely some cool stuff going on for sure mm-hmm Mm -hmm, indeed and do you think um i know it's i think um scale wise as well it uh, probably it does look quite small um when you're seeing it from this far away but when we when you're probably on set itself or when you zoom quite in a bit it is um it is probably quite massive so this is the set where the Sauron actor was on for many months so that is what we can confirm here and yeah, Chris, what are just your opinions on this? Does it? Do you think this seems like some place, probably in Eriador or somewhere more, um, more south? It's pretty um, hard to say. Yeah. I guess just from the picture, but um, of course there. Are, I assume it's a picture of men, a picture, um, a village of men, and as a result, the and I guess, of course, some some Luminarian um, settlements that might be bigger or small i'm not sure but of course with the magic of film you can make everything look big or small it's definitely a possibility mm. so it's really hard to say to judge how look it will um how big it will look in the final result and um also i don't know it could be norsemen we mm. i don't know there were some early rumors when we took like some of the names that sound like um more more let's say um, old norse or something so it could be related to the uh, norsemen um then would be more in the north but yeah re it's really hard to say it could also yeah. be in the more in the south it could it could be everywhere i guess mm -hmm. so i don't really have mm -hmm. a good suggestion i guess there's a big building in the middle if i see this uh, correctly yeah maybe so, some, something like a town hall or something mm -hmm. i think that probably is the central um maybe the place for the village yeah a town hall basically is what i'm trying to find mm -hmm. and also i think if you want to see um there is looks like maybe trailers or cabins or something of those effect for where the casting crew would um probably stay so i think 
it's nice to think if we want to give you if you wanted to see like the scale and stuff like that of how Amazon are shooting. So this Saruman's actor and character was on these sets for many months, and that's the only reported sets we currently have of him being gone. Um, so yeah, I think just if you want to check that out, we'll, I'll have some more probably better quality because YouTube doesn't give the best quality. So. Of course, as actually what we wanted to add one at the end to um that hooded figure is that that this hooded figure also shows his face in one of the scenes. But so just to clarify again, Saron was on these sets and is apparently a character which is mysterious, hooded, robed, yet menacing figure. Then he is very intimidating on set <laughs> as well. But of course, a lot of people are probably going to be saying, but what about Joseph Moll? What about him? He's playing this villain called Oren, codename. So what updates we have is that he's playing a character which has an Amazon original name. So Amazon have made up this name to give to this, um, the character Joseph Moll is playing. And it is apparently a character called Adar, or Adar, A-D-A-R. And he is in fact an elf, but corrupted and tortured. So, and then, also just to add on, Joseph Mould's character Adar was also on the Humphrey hum on on the Human Village sets for a few months as well. So, Chris, what is this starting to look like? It's quite um, interesting. The first um, um, thought I had when I um, read about this um, was like, it reminded me of the, the, the orc origin in, for example, the Silmarillion and Tinted in the Lord of the Rings, that basically um, orcs are a twisted and tortured elf and basically a mockery of the creation of the elf as a result and turned into orcs, basically. And of course, it's a very complicated topic because Tolkien, over the course of his life, changed the idea what the origin of the orcs might be and um, but this is the let's say the one that to some degree works best with uh, what we have and mm. though it's not the the final thought of talking later he switched over to men but that was definitely the first um, idea i i got there if we have like an, an elf that is um, corrupted and um, tortured in some way um, maybe um, there is something going on with um Sauron capturing uh, elves, maybe for a new breed of orcs or something, I'm not sure. Um, but that, that were my uh, first uh, thoughts uh, on this. Also, this um, hooded Sauron appearing, as you mentioned, reminds me a bit, maybe a stupid comparison, but I also got the, the image of um, good old Diablo 2, the video game in my mind, mm -hmm. where we also have this hooded figure and you're following it, um, and he, it leaves chaos behind. But um, maybe they go for like a, a similar style in, in some way, would be very interesting. but. Who knows? I think this is a really good idea, you know, um, showing orcs as originating in elves is certainly something that's extremely dramatic. And, uh, you know, the elves are these, as far as we know, like as an audience, we haven't been introduced to many Maiar or any Valar yet. So the elves mm. are like the, the, the most mm -hmm. perfect race that we can see. And seeing somebody of that race take such a deep fall, you know, and, and get tortured and corrupted and maybe potentially his character being brought closer to the race of Orc, I think mm. that's a very, yeah. very appealing idea for the audience. And mm -hmm. But we don't know yeah. if... Um, sorry, I saw some of that in the movies with Saruman. I was just going to say we saw some of that in the movies with yeah. Saruman and... Mm -hmm. Kai, mm -hmm. right? yeah. yeah yeah we did but we didn't see those just taking that taking idea in. yeah potentially mm -hmm. yeah saruman i think in the films uh, explains this to the orcs which are named i forgot is it lourdes yeah Something yeah. Like this. yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah he explains it to him the origin i remember this seems a really iconic one Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's yeah. true yeah and if the show is going to be in continuity with the films which by all accounts we think it's going to be it would make sense for them to, you know, take this a little bit further and actually show us the process from the get-go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also what I want to um, quickly add here is that we don't know if 
Marley's Maul's character himself. So this Adar character, so that's his character name in the show. So we don't know if that character actually is like corrupted from an orc to elf or elf to orc but we know that he is corrupted and tortured at some points so maybe he's tortured while well enough we're not sure but more on that character this character now so we now know joseph marley mal is playing adar so um so adar is sindarin for father and what we can also say is that on the sets adar was in charge of the orcs and they say and they say and saw him as a quote father figure of sorts but he is not an orc himself but the orcs and everyone around him refer to him as a father and it's quite interesting that Adar in Sindarin is father so do you think it's a nice little mm. thing that um the showrunners or the creators have done here um Philosopher Games. It's, it's really an, an interesting um, thing. I'm, I'm. It's really hard, hard to say, because the the relationship between an orc and an elf is, I'm not really sure, um, often covered in in the law, if at all, except for in combat, and. Um, but I guess in a way, um, it, it makes sense. I I assume the question is, of course, is always. Um, um, how how well can they portray it, and how well um, does it make sense inside? It's also a very difficult question already. Um, would this would it be ha would it happening that um, elves still get captured and uh, transformed into orcs this late in, for example, the Second Age, or was it was it more an origin story thing that um, started very very early in the uh, years of the trees, and um, then from this time on, all the orcs are basically um, um, descendants from those original orcs. And this technique of transforming um, elves again to orcs um, wasn't used anymore. It, it, it's really hard uh, to say yeah. how this exactly um, works, I guess. But maybe, maybe, um, could it be a possibility that um, maybe he hasn't been transformed from orc to um i mean from elf to orc because in this passage well in these leaks he's sounding like he is already in fair form in a fair elven form so it's interesting to see how that actually works so but we do know at the same time that joseph mold's um character adar has been um has had this happen to him so he has been twisted i think in some way but we don't know how but he is at the same time um Likitia. he is now the leader of orcs yeah indeed i wonder what that means <laughs> i'm i'm really i'm really curious about his character um so we, we still don't know much about him at any rate, but um, to me this sounds as though, you know, he could potentially be like a general or a lieutenant of, of Sauron's. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why he's leading the orc army. No idea. Maybe. Then of course, of course, we then come to, you know, the question of what is the relationship between the hooded figure and Adar. And I think that's mm. a very interesting one as well. Yeah, because I think it's interesting, Carl, to point out that this hooded figure who's meant to apparently be Sauron, but then also this uh, this Adar character played by Joseph Marla, both on the human village sets at the same time. So what do you think that might mean? Yeah, it would be interesting to see two big bads go, you know, in the same scene together. It would... Um... I don't know. It, it would certainly indicate, I think, something like Lakitia is saying, with you know, like a like an orc chieftain or, or something like that. But mm -hmm. hard to say. Yeah, because the, what the leak did say that like, it was made clear. It would be made clear that Joseph Mold's character is not actually part of the orcs. He's just in charge of them. Mm -hmm. But it's also an elf at the same time. So I think it's an elf managing. Yeah. Or it's like really, really, <laughs> it's starting to get a bit confusing. But to make it even more in confusing we're going to go back to the hooded and robed figure so apparently this hooded and robed menacing figure said to be said to apparently be Sauron leads a group of men somewhere we don't know where and they all celebrate this character in a chant so this is starting to look quite ritualistic isn't it Chris yeah that's definitely true and I think it makes if we 
look for example the later events of uh, Numenor etc et where um, yeah, Sauron becomes kind of the high priest of Numenor it makes kind of sense I guess and he also sometimes I guess try to or in the Numenor scene also establish this Morgos cult and uh, use it for his purposes um, so I, I can definitely um, see this um, much much um, yeah it makes a lot of sense in just to, I don't want to jump back too much on the other thing. I just uh, thought on the um, on the um, father figure or, or leader. Like it's it's well, usually elves and uh, orcs are bitter foes. So um, yeah. this maybe, is really a quite unusual scene. I think. Uh, sorry. I think. Do you think it's maybe that? Of course, but this elf has been corrupted and twisted. So yeah. now maybe that's how it does make sense because now. They, he's probably Joseph. Well, Adar is not thinking like an elf anymore. He's thinking, yeah, he's yeah. being twisted. So yeah, maybe that uh, those um, rivalries um, between the races, um, maybe is something. It, it is it is. I understand. It is quite hard to put all this all together to see how this works. But um, of course, I think at the same time that it might be some confusion while the fireworks are above me. So um. I think <laughs> how to say is that we have this r hooded robed figure which is said to be Sauron. He is very menacing and he is on this human village set. Then we also have Joseph Mald's character who which is called Adar and that is um, Sindarin for father and apparently he is a leader of orcs on the, on the human village sets as well. So both of these characters are on the sets. So and at least one of them is Sauron, which is what we 100% know, because what we do know for 100% is that Sauron has been on these, on this um, human village set for many months. The actor playing him has 100% been on there. That's what we can, uh, we are 100% sure of. But this is where it starts to get a bit more technical. But who wants to make it even more confusing? Let's, let's make it even more confusing. So apparently the hooded figure and Molly's Maul's character Adar also face off against each other but then reconcile afterwards so cards look like these two uh, probably go off we don't know the context of why they go facing off against each other and make up afterwards do you think this is maybe um Maul's character when he this is Adar when he is still potentially not corrupted and they face off do you think do you think it could work like that or something or maybe they're just the two maybe egos of two villains going at each other yeah, actually, that's a really good point. I didn't think of it being pre-corruption, uh, right? Um, it would that would make the dynamic a lot more interesting. That's a really good point, actually. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah, I, yeah, you I actually in in any case, I don't think we're gonna have you know two big bats. So I think yeah. there's just gonna be Sauron, <clears throat> yeah. and then there's gonna be his collaborators or Adar. basically mm -hmm. servants, really Adar. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's gonna be them facing off in the sense of maybe Adar challenging Sauron or something like that. I think it's maybe probably just gonna be a minor mutiny, something similar. Mm -hmm. yeah, and can I just I just add? Yeah. Add <laughs> Sorry, just a little something uh, I wanted to add about Adar as well before we move on. Um, I was really wondering, you know, what his origin is. So who this character who this character is, is he just a new Elven character? Or is he maybe an existing character that's been given a new story? So I the hope first it's thing the first. <laughs> I hope it's not me like Gilgalad or something. That would be the worst I, thing. I did too, but the, the first thing that came to my mind was, of course, you know, Celebrimbor from Shadow of War and Shadow of Mor Mordor, where he gets basically, it's quite, it, it, it reads very similarly. He gets corrupted in a way. He gets turned into a wraith. Um, so I really hope they're not following that trajectory. <laughs> and yeah, that this I is indeed a I, new character. Yeah, I agree. Like great games, but no, the lore is yeah. it's just not there. It's not there. I talked a lot about this in a in a long video, but yeah, yeah, I, I agree on this. It's the idea, I mean, the idea is interesting. It's an interesting what if scenario. But if you really want like to follow the law, that would definitely not work. It's definitely stated that um, Kilibrimbor um, gets uh, murdered and shot by orc arrows and is carried around through the streets on a on a Ooh. on a pole, basically. <laughs> so it's I've quite dark. <laughs> I just thought something. Yeah. What if this is Kelebrimbo? <laughs> Imagine. That would be fanfic to the next, next level. But maybe this is 
Amazon's way of adding in, but I'm joking. That's that would be absolutely ridiculous <laughs> if this character is Keller Brimble. That would be yeah, yeah. beyond crazy. But I think just yeah. to give um more context, so we were previously reported a rumor which is actually interlinked to this that in one of the previous second nature episodes a village has been attacked by orcs until the village leader had to surrender so we now now know that this is the same village so it looks like they these village villages fight but then they have to surrender now they use two different characters it's hooded figure and adar are on these on the sets so um, Chris, overall, what do you think this is the the big picture here? What do you think, like, for the show in general, what do you think this is trying to say about the storyline that Amazon are trying to go with this? I guess, like, a story always needs a conflict, and um, the the uh, the problem in the in the if we just look at the books is, of course, that there are a lot of blank pages at this time. Like, it's even hard to somebody wrote a comment um i really liked his wording there and he said it's really hard to pin down for example galadriel where she exactly is at this point there's so many versions of um mm -hmm. stories of uh, there for her and um as a result they definitely have tons of space um to um to to explore here and as said um earlier the, the it, it's a time where sauron recovers his strength becomes more confident again and i can definitely see him attacking settlements maybe um, trying to corrupt people. We, we know that, for example, in um, uh, Mordor, he had many uh, prisoners that basically worked as farmers uh, there to, to some degree. There's also the story with the el with the endwives, quite fascinating, uh, but that's later in the um, Last Alliance stuff. But um, definitely there is an infrastructure. He has needs need for workers and um, maybe also for um, orc And um, When we talked a moment ago, it was a, a bit... Um, distracted for a moment i was um, thinking about um the the urukai and when they first appeared but sadly uh, i had not enough time to find this to find out mm -hmm. when exactly but um it's a new orc breed so maybe he's working on something like this but of course i think the first uh, mention uh, is is much much later of uh, urukai especially like let me check. I think it's when um, Denisor the first was uh, in charge. So that's late. That is like yeah, late uh, 2375 to 2477 um, third age. So we have, we we like um, yeah an age behind, but um, it's it's still interesting. And um, what um, Sauron might have experimented with something. Maybe also um, um, Arda, uh, Adar um, could be. A result um, of this. There's, a, there's some very grim stuff in some of Tolkien's yeah. notes. For example, about um, also the breeding of the orcs. For example, um, I think there's a mention. I'm not sure in which it was. In either a War of Jewels or in uh, Morgoth's Ring. In maybe Laws and Customs. I'm not 100% sure. But there was like a mention about that if you twist and corrupt a being... Um, enough for example men they you could make them also breed with orcs something like this was a mm. phrasing there so maybe um i don't know this is this is something they kind of going for with this uh, character and yeah you can see the sauron is a very very wicked and evil entity and um, if we think back at the f to the first age the story with uh, gorlim and um, who then betrays but here um, and so it's a very grim story too and yeah, not only that, just every time when Sauron appears, grim and terrible things happen. So it definitely makes sense that he probably does some very terrible things to people. I definitely can see that happen, to be honest. So in this bigger picture, when um, Sauron needs to get his strength back and um, maybe um, he, he, Sauron's goal is, of course, to control all of Middle-earth and possibly the whole world, even though he probably knows that he can't do that. But... Middle Earth is definitely um, was in reach for him several times. Like when Numenor would not have intervened um, before, he would already have conquered Middle Earth. And um, this is basically for him just maybe a, in his own perception, I assume, just a little setback. It's just okay, a delay of the um, inevitable for him and um, what he sees inevitable for Middle Earth. And so I can totally see that um, mm -hmm. little stories like this happen where he maybe um, corrupts um, certain um, beings like men and so on, attacking villages, taking land back, maybe imprison them as set for, for infrastructure, like uh, producing Indeed. food for all of his armies. 
and smitheries and what and so on. So there's definitely um something going on her uh, here. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree, and I think one thing this does leads me on is when people say, "Oh, the synopsis said living is in a relative time of peace," but this does seem like it. So all these villages are at peace, but then Sauron comes with his apparently orc armies and are taking them. While Sauron and Adar are coming and attack, attacking um, and taking these lands, so it does fit in with the synopsis one hundred percent. So yeah, I agree as well. Like overall, what this does um, portray for the Amazon show, so. Um, and it does tie in really nicely to what we know of the story so far. So n- here we have orc attacking villages. Uh, then we have Galadriel and her companion, or maybe not so much a companion, <laughs> sailing to Numenor, potentially to asking for help against Sauron. So I think this this is really starting yeah. to paint a really nice picture of what we can est- expect to see in the first mm-hmm. season. And added that as well. Then we know the leaks of Numenorian vs. Orc attacks. So I think they're just uh, battles, I mean, so... And maybe that is trying them to reclaim them, who knows. But mm-hmm. I think um, another thing, Carl, is that it's really interesting that we're actually going to see more of Sauron in this show. He is going to be this robed, hooded, mystery, hooded mysterious, but yet um, looks like... I think this has got me quite excited. What do you think? Yeah, it's super exciting. And I know you had mentioned earlier that <clears throat> the character does reveal his face at one point, but it makes me wonder if that's like a, you know, like an end of the season kind of finale thing and, and what kind of physical role we'll see Sauron taking throughout the course of, of the first season. Mm-hmm. And maybe another thing that I wanted to um, end on with is that it could be possible Morley's character, Adar, is an alias name for Sauron or that the mm. hooded figure and Adar are both Sauron, or most likely the hooded figure is just Sauron and this Adar, who is probably meant to be um, the leader of the orcs, but not actually orc himself, but an elf, but who is twisted and corrupted, is just maybe, I think some of people may, um, we had this idea, Kyle, maybe that is the Witch King, but maybe that doesn't mm. make sense, because that's to be a man, there were men, and this <clears> is an <throat> elf here, yeah. so... I think that maybe... yeah. I don't want. I don't want to see any elves turning into Nazgul. But, oh um, dear. I, yeah. I, but I do. I do want to see the Nazgul. So, so we'll see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really already. Oh, sorry. No, please go ahead. <laughs> I guess it's uh, yeah, it's really a interesting or very com- really complicated topic if you um, think about it. Like if we read Morgoth's Ring and so on, there's a lot of um, text about how um, elves and their spirits work and their relationship. Um, with with mm. with body and mind for elves, and I can definitely yeah I can see this if you look very closely at this being a bit um, problematic, um, especially like turning them into Nazgul. On the other side, in the first age, as the mention of yeah I don't know um, um, ghosts in the forest choking um, trespassers. That is there's some series that these are like elf race, but I guess mm. it's uh, yeah it's, it's complicated. This is without rings though. And who knows what um, elf? I, 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 I have also a hard time to see like an elf being turned into an Asgore, though. No, yeah, I agree. I think that would be taking it a bit too far. But mm-hmm. um, uh, Lucky, do you think you wanted to add something? Oh no, just I just wanted to address um, what you said that maybe Adar and the hooded figure are both Sauron. I, I really don't see that happening. I think that would be a whole new level of, you know, a layered personality or something. So I, I don't think they're going to go that route. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we'll just have to, as usual, wait and see how Amazon do tackle this. But just to cover, because I'm sure, I hope you've been really informative today, but I'm sure some people might be confusing them a little bit as well. So what we know is that that Sauron is 100% at this human village set that we have on screen right now. This is an overview of it, and this is what it would look like when shooting happens. And apparently, there's also a character called Adar, which in um, Sindarian means father, and this is being played by Joseph Moll, and he is Joseph Moll's character, Adar, is meant to be the chief in charge of the orcs but he's actually an elf himself but has been somehow corrupted or twisted or maybe he is an elf that got twisted so maybe he's been corrupted into a warlord or something like that so maybe it's a it could simply just be a good elf that got corrupted to evil 
So that's potentially what we are seeing here. And then he's in charge of the Yorks. And then we are seeing some Sauron worshipping it looks like happening at this village as well. We know the village did get attacked and that um, Sauron is a mysterious hooded robed yet menacing figure and is very intimidating on set. So he does reveal his face in one scene. I think unless any of you want anything to add I think that covers everything in today's video. I might have an interesting, since we talked about uh, the Nazgul, um, if we consider that, okay, it's really hard to say when exactly this particular scene plays, but let's assume uh, if we consider the recent um, Galadriel leak, this would be around the time of uh, Tar Miriel, maybe Tar Palantir, um, then the Nazgul would already be around for quite some time, if I'm not mistaken. They um, first appear um, Second Age 2251. And um, do you see it also a chance? We, we talk about um, Sauron being this hooded figure there. Um, is it quite potential? But do you think that his servants, the Nazgul, that in theory should be around already, will also be um, maybe have to do also to do with this particular scene or are also around mm -hmm. in the series? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think we could. That is a really interesting theory. Or maybe. The Arik character is maybe a Nazgul. I think I saw that theory recently as well. But mm. it'd be in, I, I would say it would make sense instead of having um, the Adar character being a, an elf who's in charge of the orcs. It would have made sense to have maybe a Nazgul there instead of maybe the Witch King and have it like work like yeah. that. I think but we'll have to wait and see how it works out. But the thing I'm really excited for is that Amazon are expanding on Sauron. He isn't just going to be a random guy. Well, I in top of a tower. This is <laughs> probably going to shock quite a lot of people. That yes, mm -hmm. Sauron was actually in form some point in um, the Second Age, and of course it'd be interesting to see how Amazon pull it off. But I think it's been a really really interesting episode, and we'll wrap up with the pictures of. Um, the the human village set but firstly thanks for coming on chris i really appreciate it. it's been a lot of fun yeah thank you for having me really nice to have you and have an interesting discussion about um this in particular league really awesome sauron is also like a topic um i find always always very interesting mm -hmm. so it, uh, totally and do you think this might be one of the first videos you've been in which is going to be under an hour because we're only 40 something minutes in <laughs> So. <laughs> well, maybe we have to go a bit longer then. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe we can do a round two, which is over an hour. But and also, I want to say um, thank you to the fireworks for participating in today's video. <laughs> I can hear them going very up. actively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shout out to the fireworks. Yeah, really big shout out. <laughs> nice, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, also thank you, Lakitia, for being on as always. Hey, this was fun. I'm really glad we're finally learning something about Sauron. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's been really exciting, for, personally, for me, seeing Sauron being fleshed out. But also, firstly, and not firstly, I don't know if it's firstly, but lastly, thank you to Kyle. Saving the best for last. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the, great, oh, great, oh. This is, this <laughs> great time talking about all this stuff. Um, it just, it just further uh, inflames my excitement for the show. Indeed, and I think maybe some of the rumors recently have got people on edge, maybe the um Isildur stuff and maybe gladly mm. Numenor but hearing that Sauron is going to be tackled this way is quite exciting depending towards the rest but thank you guys for watching I really appreciate it please like and subscribe but until the next video my friends goodbye